Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic and this is another reaction for Steins Gate Zero. It is episode 22 and you know what to do as always if you want to see the reaction itself go down into my descriptions follow the links replace the circumflex dot parts with real dots and enjoy. Once you've done feel free to come back here and hear out my thoughts about this episode. So see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Now, um, this is the second to last episode, right? Um, what to say? We finish off with, I think it is kind of a little cliffhanger here with this number. And as possibly everyone, I kind of hope that it is the Steinsgate um, timeline, the one that we were searching for all the time. Hopefully, we will see. Um... There's a bit to talk about, but in general, I felt like um, this episode was kind of bringing us back together, um, putting in a lot of emotions, especially from the side of Amadeus. Um, we had like a farewell moment, a nice last moment between um, all of them, between mainly, however, uh, Ocarin and Rizu in the form of Amadeus. This, um, it felt a, a lot like a date and a farewell at the same time, a strange thing. Um, they did it, however, very nice. They uh, pointed out to us, to me, uh, how beautiful the world is and that we just don't see it. That is something, um, I think we can all realize that when we are visiting other countries or other cities. Um, where we do live in the place in the house in the flat in uh, the uh, in the area um in maybe even in our country in general we don't see the beauty in it so much anymore um it is this that we need to take time to realize the beauty apart from that we are just you know running through busy with work busy wi with um keeping a schedule and so on and so forth um and when we are on vacation, when we travel somewhere else, we just walk around, we kind of, as strange as it sounds, open our eyes again. Um, we, when, when I'm at the sea, I look at the sea and it is a thing of beauty, but even like um, some flowers or some trees have a deeper and more, um, I wouldn't say emotional, more like nature-based feeling and meaning to me. Um, but when I, at my home, really am able to think about stuff like that and then take my time, I, uh, I see the beauty there as well. Um, I try within the last years, just from time to time, um, to breathe through and just look into the nature. You know, look at a tree, look at grass. As strange as it sounds, there is... Um, beauty melancholy in many ways um, and kind of peace and, and freedom in there if you are able to see it and I think that's what um, Kurizu in the form of Amadeus here is telling to us as well even in the city which she got shown um, which is majorly um, just glass and steel and um, you know stone bricks and everything even there she sees so much beauty and she's aware that mankind does not see this beauty as much as she does and not as often. So um, there was, it was a bit stretched, this part, but I liked it. It, was, it has a deep meaning, so um, it's a good one. Um, we had the beginning of the episode, this, like, again, a little downfall, um, a little, you know, regrets and sadness in, the, um, in Ocarin who for a moment was unsure how to continue. Um, he paraphrased it very good on the rooftop when he said that he promised to himself to never give up again, which is a major thing. Um, but he was aware at this moment that he doesn't know how to continue because it felt to him again like there is no option. And then we have Maho and Amadeus like um, building him up again this moment of just don't give up you know um the chance is not looking good but it is not zero Steins gate zero i mean very fitting here 
Uh, it is not zero, it is one. We in, in many ways we have zero and one in this episode a lot. Uh, we have it when it comes to Amadeus, the idea of in her world all is logic and um, reason. Because she's a computer still, she's a computer program, so it's zero and one for her. Um, we have Steins Gate Zero and the naming of the show. We have the timeline, which, um, as you can see here, in is always moving around the one, below a one or above a one, but it is zero to one something. Um, so they played a bit with number theory, I think. I'm not sure if they did it with a purpose. Um, once he kind of grappled himself again, he got back in the mood, he went into the crazy um, scientist again, which is always interesting to see and I like it. Um, the theory of Daru that by being crazy, he is able to just follow his train of thoughts and thus can overwhelm those who talk against him. Is an interesting idea. I mean, we all have that. Uh, we have a train of thought, we have a concept in our mind, and we haven't finished it yet. So we start, and if we are given the time to think through it and talk it through with others, there might be an interesting result in the end. But very often, in our time, we start talking and taking the first steps, and others are interfering like, Ah, don't try that, that doesn't work. You know, stuff like that. Or, oh yeah, I tried that, this here is a solution. So, we are not able to continue our very own journey there. Either we are pushed away from it, um, because others think it's wrong, or want to change something about it, or we are presented um, one resolution already, which does not have to be the resolution we would have had. Just saying. Um... So by being crazy, you don't have to listen to other voices because you have enough voices in your own head. Um, just a theory there. Nice one. Um, we have a little a little moment with Mahu. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if I should be okay with her slapping the boys or not. On the one hand, they clearly deserved it because they, um, you know, they behave as they do. And um, they went over a line. On the other hand, I cannot um, agree with any kind of violence. And for me, it makes no, no difference if a male slaps a woman or a woman slops, slaps a male. Um, because in both cases, it is violence. But here, I can see why, um, on the one hand, Daru with his comments all the time went once again a little bit overboard. And um, Ocarin by... Uh, Holding her up, you know, it's multiple things, it's touching private space, he makes her look bad and he is clearly playing on her, well, I wouldn't say weakness on one of her major issues, being perceived as someone who cannot help herself because she's small. And you could see in the end, by putting the books there, she found a solution by herself, so she did not need their help. So I can see why she did it. Um... They have another solution for the time travel. Ah, uh, D. Ryan. I don't know that. I, it rings no bell for me. Uh, maybe some of you will explain what this is, Ryan. I don't know. Um, it feels... Well, we had that in the past already. When I said I will ignore things for the benefit of the story. Because I think they want to tell a story. It's not only about logic and it's not only about everything's fitting perfectly in the storyline. Which would be good if it would be because it shows us that the uh, writers really put their mind into it. Um, but there are sometimes moments when you have to just, you know, uh, let things slip for the goodwill of the story. I will do that here again, but I will still comment it. Um... Bringing in, in the last episode, before the solution, a completely new way of time travel, which in no way is really connected to the ones before, which was not like introduced before, and um, there was like a foundation being laid, and it evolved to that. 
is a bit weak. Um, if they would have, like, I don't know, put together the concepts of D-mail, of the time travel, and of um, uh, the time leap, if they would have come something there, or if Maho, who is shown again and again as an incredible, intelligent woman, who may have find, found another option for this whole idea, and by thus, by this not being overshadowed anymore by Kurizu, which is her major problem, um, or Daru constructing something which uses parts of the other things before, something like that, where I can say that was a journey that led there. It is the last step in a journey and it is a logical forward thinking. That would have been good and I would have been fine with that. Um, even if they would have done like, I don't know, uh, why not go with the D-mail option and make the three parties fight each other? Not that that would be a good option. Um, but, you know, I it just felt cheap. It was this, oh yeah, um, I use this program which no one else used um, and this one is not checked by CERN. Is it not? How do we know? You know? So it's just like you, you pull something out of your head. The miracle at the end that no one has seen coming at all. Um, it works, no question, because it is a self-fulfilling prophecy here, because you created it to solve the problem. The thing, however, is you create a problem before, a huge one in this case, you, you make it unsolvable with the options that the characters have, and then you solve this with something that is then introduced for the first time ever. Nah. Because as a reactor, as example, I could not foresee that. In, in no way. How, how could I? There's no chance. Um, you know, it's... Yeah, as I said, it's a bit weak. I'm sad about that, but okay. So, I mean, the plan itself, however, they invented, so that's the part that is for the story, which is major, so... Which brings us to what they want to do. So they they send this Dirine email back to Daru in the past and make him delete the Amadeus data, the memory data of Marquis Carizu, before Amadeus itself is created at all. Because it seems like the Russians stole at least parts of this knowledge, of this information, thus knew about the time machine. Due to which they were able to always shoot the rocket at the time machine at this time. Okay, I can see the logic in there. It's a little bit shooting with cannons onto Sterlings or something like that, onto small ones. Um, Ask myself if there would have been like a smaller solution, which is not so big like destroying Amadeus. But then Amadeus is a major player in this game all the time. And um, having the memories of Marquis Carizu, who is kind of the inventor of the time travel theory. It makes sense. The question is how this will change other things now as well. Because... Um, by getting this information, Daru knows about Amadeus. Um, he's not stupid. I mean, he's a really, really clever one. We know that. Um, so I guess he will be able to draw lines between Amadeus and Makikis Kurizu, appearing later on in the time then meeting up for the first time with him and with Ocarin and everyone. So he will be aware there's something weird. It might change so much more. I discussed that in the original Steins Gate very often, I remember, when it was about the D-mail idea. The uh, idea of sending an, a short message or an email back to yourself in the past, just saying stuff like, um, don't drink that milk, you know? Okay, you will not drink that milk, but you are aware you got a message from yourself from the future. So you will behave differently after that. It does not change that one incident only. It changes stuff around. And this is where I'm uh, waiting for if they will reflect it in the next episode. Um, being someone that likes happy endings, I kind of expect and hope for uh, all is good future, you know, no world war, 
no CERN taking over. Um, everything is nice and fine. Um, and no one is dying in this case because that would be the Steins Gate timeline that um, Marquise is living, Marquise Kurizu, that um, everyone is living there. The question is, will they end it with like a, they already they are meeting and everything is going on and they're happily ever after? I think they will end it with this typical kind of nice ending cliffhanger of Marquis Kurizu. I don't know, like bumping into Ocarina for the first time. That was Dance Gate original episode one. That would be a nice ending because we would have come full circle. Kind of wait for that. And they do not answer if they are in the Steinsgate line. Because you don't know if all this stuff with CERN is happening again or not. But it would be something I would be okay with. I don't need to know that, you know? it. Everyone can take from that moment what he wants. Just saying. Would be a nice ending. Um, There are two more things. So one thing is uh, Amadeus. In my opinion, in the end for sure, and I guessed already before, Amadeus kind of developed like emotions. Um, I don't know if you could say it's real emotions or if it's just like that the computer is able to simulate them for its, for itself. It doesn't matter. Um, but there was blushing, there was reactions in many ways, which were like emotions. The um, watch out for him uh, cry in the end is, I mean... It is very much emotionally uh, colored, so I guess there was something happening. Um, not sure about if it is good or bad. We had that already. Um, an AI with emotions is a dangerous thing to have, no question there. Um, however, Amadeus asked the major questions. The questions that, in my opinion, humanity is asking itself since such a long time. Why am I here? What do I do here? What is my what is my uh, purpose in life, in existence? So those are the questions that Amadeus asks itself. So this is self-reflection. And this is normally sentient being. Something that is self-aware. So this step is clear to be seen here. And then you destroy it by its own choice. Once again, Kurizu, kind of. Um... Offering herself for the greater good, as she did in the original Steins Gate as well. Um, and then we had the uh, the command that Mahu used, der alte würfelt nicht, um, which is translated more neither the old one does not roll the dice. Um, I'm pretty sure it is a reference to um, uh, Gott würfelt nicht, um, which is. I am not sure. Uh, it, I think it is a psychologist who said that. It's a major quote. I haven't checked it yet. But there is this major quote, God würfelt nicht, God does not roll the dice, which referred to that there is a plan for everything. And uh, I think it was Ein No, uh, I think Einstein later on... I'm not sure. I think either it was from Einstein or Einstein later on said something like God does not only roll the dice, he's cheating. Something like that. I remember that. It was very entertaining. Um, so, but they put that in um, so by saying der alte, the old one. I guess they are referring to God in this case in the meaning of one monotheistic God. Um, shows again that they bring in very often German terms um, and uh, a deeper meaning in here this idea of that um, although we are talking about science here all the time and time travel and how to do it scientifically um, we have in this episode on the one hand Amadeus uh, a computer um, an artificial intelligence saying there is beauty in this world and you don't see it or you too often don't see it um, and we end Amadeus or start the ending of Amadeus with a with a wording uh with a phrase that is about God, that is about um creation, you know, and the belief that it is not all just logic. So interesting. 
this mix up again. A nice episode. I really liked it. I look forward to the finale. I guess you do as well. And um, that's it from me this time. As always, feel free to comment, like and subscribe. Feel free to visit my Patreon, uh, my, my anime list or my Facebook page. I'm all there all the time. And um, next episode will be next Wednesday. It will be the finale. And after that, for those who went through all of this year, there will be another series I will react to, which was voted for on my Patreon. So I hope you liked my Steinsgate travel. I did for sure. Until the last time at the next time. My name is Relax and Panic. Goodbye and out.